Hello, everyone. I'm Gina Phillips, and welcome to SparkCast, your place for all things tech and innovation. We are diving into some pretty cool topics today. This is episode five, and if you haven't already heard episode four, three, two, and one, I encourage you to jump off here, give them a listen, and jump back on. In episode four, it was all about Spark Center and Launch Lab, a fellow regional innovation center in Kingston, and how they're working together to support entrepreneurs. It was an awesome conversation. I encourage you to listen to it. Today's episode continues along that same thread. So we're going to be sitting down with another of Spark Center's key partners, Paro Center for Women's Enterprise, to hear how they're supporting women and non-binary entrepreneurs. And uh, to kick things off, though, I'm going to bring on Spark Center's Christina Savannah, just to kind of tee things up and also just to find out what Spark Center is up to lately. How are you doing, Christina? Oh, I'm great, Gina. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. So how's Spark Center uh, and all the initiatives that you've been doing lately? Oh, gosh, we are busier than ever. Um, We tend to think that this time of year we'd ramp down, but we are ramping up. (laughs) So, I mean, as a regional innovation center, you know, we're always working with local and international entrepreneurs to really help elevate and advance their business. So, you know, whether that's through workshops and masterclasses or it's one-on-one advisory support, we're with them uh, every step of the way through their entrepreneurial journey. That's so cool. I I bet it's neat to see people go uh, like start in one place and end up in a, you know, actually achieving their dreams that they they always wanted to achieve. Yeah, it's watching that growth, uh, whether they're a startup and they, you know, seek funding and seeing that milestone being achieved. It's incredible. That is awesome. Well, I want to get into our guests because they're pretty special today. I'm going to start with Kayla Sumer. She is the Business Northeast Counselor and Event Coordinator. She describes herself as a serial entrepreneur. I got to ask her about that. Kayla, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you, Gina? I'm doing awesome. So is this, you're a serial entrepreneur, meaning you cannot, you literally cannot stop creating things, creating businesses. Stop creating businesses. No, I create a business and that rolls into something else. And then I get brewing with some ideas and, and, you know, that's where the magic happens. I love that. You're also a professional photographer. Your work has been published all over the world, including in McLean's magazine. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, um, I was published in McLean's Magazine, which was a really great um, sort of accomplishment for me. But I've been doing lots of photography, wedding. Um, Right now I'm focusing on um, Fun Cube Photo Booth, which is a photo booth business. Yeah, a luxury photo booth company. I got to hear more about this. So where exactly can we find these photo booths? So I'm actually located in Sudbury, Ontario, and uh, but we do travel across the province. We um, do a on-site instant photo printing. Uh, we also do digital options and virtual photo booth options. Of course, with COVID, we had to sort of pivot there. And um, yeah, that's that's my business. Oh, man, I would love to take that to a girl's night with my girlfriends. That would be a blast. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I bet. Well, you're also a mentor and an advocate for women in business, which is the focus today. So I want to kick things off talking about Pero. Um, I was checking out the Pero website and the organization has now supported more than 22,000 businesses. Is that for real? Yes, it's actually over 26,000 businesses supported. (laughs) Um, so we're we're growing. We're constantly growing. There's there's definitely a need for support out there. We've given over four and a half million dollars from Paro grants alone, and over ten million just in grant dollars to um, Paro women. So, so you know, and that's across the province. Uh, we we offer our peer lending circles, and of course, we're that connector with um, partners and mentors to our clients. We also work closely with federal provincial programs, um, of course, with technology to helping businesses really just at any stage, uh, startups, scale up growth. And um, we have a lot of grants also through Paro, including our Biz Growth Grant to help them really scale up with equipment. 
Mm. And I understand that Pero recently completed a pandemic recovery survey to track, evaluate, and, and analyze the effects of the ongoing, unfortunately, COVID-19 pandemic. So what effect has the pandemic had on women entrepreneurs and their businesses? What did you find out in that survey? Yeah, well, as as business counselors, you know, we work firsthand with women entrepreneurs. So we we heard the struggles, we heard them, you know, and and we really just wanted to help them. So, you know, government came back and said we need concrete answers as to what's happening and and how can we support these entrepreneurs. So Pero created a survey for women and um, you know their pandemic recovery and what they what they needed. Uh, the major thing that they needed was financing. It's a major your concern. Women entrepreneurs uh, face more rejections for loans, investments for their business. Uh, there's a huge gender gap. Um, you know, we're, we're micro businesses, we're sole proprietors, and um, sometimes we're not eligible for government programs. There's a barrier with childcare. Of course, we had children at home and, you know, juggling daycares, homeschooling, elder care. And really um, just flagged for reduced emotional and mental well-being. So a lack of support for mental health. So we just really, really needed so many things during that time. The survey told us so much. You know, Indigenous entrepreneurs also was flagged as a concern. And, uh, you know, they face particularly um, insidious and challenging barriers of uh, racism, poverty, and uh, poor access to finance there. So those were the those were the main findings from the results. And, um, you know, we sent those back and and we were able to get some some funding and, and finance opportunities from that. Well, wow, that's great. How has your journey as an entrepreneur kind of played into your passion for this work? <laughs> So, uh, you know, rewind five years ago, I didn't really know much about business. And I had, I wouldn't say a fully really know what I was doing. I didn't have the support that I needed. And then I did a random Google search and I found Pero. And instantly they started helping me build my business plan and helped me sort of um, grow my business. And when the pandemic hit, uh, I'm in the events industry, so, you know, I wasn't doing events. So Pro said, hey, do you want a job? And I said, sure. Um, I knew what it felt to um, have my business shut down. And I knew what it felt like to, um, you know, recover from that. So I had the tools in my tool belt to really support the women. And, um, you know, it's really a luxury to help the women apply for the same things that Pro had helped me apply for. Um, and... Yeah, it's, it's just really, really um, a good feeling being able to give back. And, you know, within the past few years working with Paro, I've assisted over 100 women successfully receive a lot of funding dollars and uh, support with their recovery, too. So that's been very rewarding and helpful. Yeah, sounds very, very fulfilling. I, I love this. Um, and it's interesting because women <laughs> face a lot of uh, dynamics in the workplace. It's like we're constantly navigating um, different situations and how our gender plays into that. So I want to bring in our second guest, Penny Tremblay, the workplace relationships expert. This is so cool, Penny. I honestly, I had never thought of this as a job before. <laughs> Do you get that a lot? <laughs> well, yes. My job has kind of morphed into what it is today. And, uh, you know, as a workplace relationships expert, um, I think we, we, we understand how um, important it is to build good relationships in the workplace, but also how difficult it is because humans are very complicated. <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah. So you're the founder of the Sandbox System. I love the naming of that. A playful approach to relationship management and conflict resolution, but truly teaching people how to play nice in the sandbox. What does that look like? Well, um, you know, the, the brand came about because I was um, really working my elevator pitch and teaching and telling people what I did when they said, hey, like, what do you do? And then one day I said, um, I, I help teach people how to play nice in the sandbox at work. And all of a sudden I had people leaning in and saying, oh, my gosh, we need you to come to our workplace or we need you to come to our family dinner. And I realized in that moment that I was on to something. And so I, I although my official uh, uh, corporate um, name is the Trombley Leadership Center. Mm -hmm. I've been building the Sandbox brand and everybody everywhere loves it. And um, 
And so, you know, basically what that means in, in it's, it's about interpersonal relationships um, for the intention of embracing conflict because where there are humans, there will be conflict. Um, you know, conflict is inevitable, but suffering is optional and it costs corporations huge amounts, like $359 billion a year was a 2008 statistic, which we have far surpassed, um, especially with the pandemic and the issues surrounding that. Mm -hmm. So um, workplace relationships is a really important topic. And my approach to it is from the inside out. Mm. Do you cover sort of how to um, work from home and how that might affect yes. your relationships? Yes. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking about that quite a lot lately as I yes. sort of balance, uh, you know, I want a few days at home, but I also need to come into work because mm -hmm. I don't want to lose that connection, those right. relationships that I've been building. Mm -hmm. I think the most important thing to understand there is that distance erodes trust. So when we're not physically in each other's company and face to face, we tend to lose trust in number one, ourselves and number two, others. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that the three day work week, uh, you know, is a common um, uh, uh, request. People want to come in a few days a week and they're looking for the hybrid approach. And and really, I, I hope that uh, people understand how, how challenging that is for um for their corporation to, to juggle and manage. But also, I think it's going to be a really great way to um, target the burnout epidemic that we are now facing and, and you know, just give people a little bit more of a work-life balance. Mm -hmm. So have you and Kayla been in each other's physical presence at Pero? <laughs> yes. In fact, Kayla is the photographer um, for my very first book, which came out in 2014. So long before Pero, um, <laughs> Kayla took some uh, professional photos, which ended up on on the cover of my my uh, my first book. And um, Kayla and I used to both live in North Bay, and. Um, I'm pretty sure I recommended her to Pero or I gave her a really good <laughs> you reference did, or yeah. something. <laughs> for definitely my reference, Penny. So thanks for that. Oh. I love that. Yeah. You guys are supporting each other and that's probably some advice that you would give other women in business. Absolutely. You know, um, our executive director, uh, CEO, I'm, I'm not sure uh, of Rosalind's title, but Rosalind Lockyer is the, um, the, the leader of Pero, and she has a really great saying that says, a rising tide floats all boats. And, you know, women need each other. We really, really do need each other because we understand each other. We understand the um, challenges of, of being not just a woman entrepreneur. Kayla mentioned some really great points earlier about, you know, the, the survey and the topics and the challenges, but also, you know, like the whole work-life balance things. Like, how do you how do you be a successful entrepreneur and raise a family at the same time? And, and so, like, we just really need each other. And so many women are 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 also impacted by relationship struggles, divorce, um, you know, uh, loss of loved ones, etc. And it all impacts our ability to to do well at business. And so the um, my advice for all women is to um, have a circle of really strong women entrepreneurs who can help you up you know, who, who can be there for you and to support you in, in whatever you're going through. Yeah, that's awesome. Really good advice. And Kayla, as we wrap up, is there, are there any Paro events coming up that we should know about or certain things um, that we can look out for? Yes, we do. We have our next big event coming up. So talking about, you know, women coming together and seeing each other in the flesh and, and connecting and supporting each other. We have our next uh, Thrive Prospering Para Women event. It's November 24th. It's a full day event in Thunder Bay, but it will also be streamed online for people to tune in virtually. So it doesn't matter actually where you are in the world you can tune in to, to Pero's event um it's a celebration of accomplishments lots of learning throughout the day if you've ever been to a Pero event you know how much 
fun it is and how much connection you will build there. There's tons of networking opportunities. We have our, uh, we have two keynotes actually. So it's kind of a bonus. We have Cheekbone Beauty's founder, Jen Harper, and then we have a comedian coming in for some laughter. I think we all need some laughter after the pandemic, uh, Deborah Kimmett. So it's going to be a really great day. You can find more information at paro.ca. I love that. And the recording of Women's Entrepreneurship Day from November 19th will be available on Spark social pages. Uh, Christina, if you're still there, do you want to chat a bit about the next Startup Grind event at Spark Center? (laughs) And she's out. Okay, we might have lost Christina, but that's fine. I can fill in the blanks. Uh, So there's a Paro client, Denise Atkinson, who will talk about her journey to founding Tea Horse. It's an Indigenous women-owned artisanal tea company that produces first-of-its-kind wild rice tea. Oh, that sounds so good. Using natural Canadian wild rice. So make sure to visit their social pages, Paro's social pages, and stay tuned to catch the recording that will be released soon. Well, this has been SparkCast. Uh, Penny and Kayla, thank you so much for joining me today. Honestly, this has been, I I love that this podcast gives me an opportunity. It's a little selfish to uh, meet some really smart people across the country. So I appreciate that. (laughs) Thanks, Gina. It's been such an honor and and pleasure to be here. And of course, uh, to be here with my, my great colleague, Kayla. Yes, of course. Thanks so much, Gina. Nice to see you around here, Penny. Absolutely. Hope to see you guys again. And don't forget to subscribe to the show wherever you're listening to it. And if you want to learn more about Spark Center's quarterly business and innovation magazine, The Spark, you can visit thesparkmagazine.ca to subscribe. But stay tuned for next month's episode. And if you're interested in becoming a Spark Center client or would like to learn more about the organization, be sure to visit sparkcenter.org. And if you want to advertise in the magazine, you can check out the media kit. Thank you so much. My name is Gina Phillips. Catch you next time. Thank you.